Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Looper, new film starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis and Emily Blunt that just opened yesterday, I saw it this afternoon, and it was great. Not just good, but it was great. I have to see it again maybe to confirm all that stuff, um, but this is a movie that the first time I watched it, the first time you watch it, you probably kind of have to spend a lot of the time paying attention and discovering things having a great time discovering things, but I think it's really going to be going to be on the second watch when you can just sit back and just let just thing, just enjoy everything that much more. And, um, yeah, this film is going to be fighting for, I don't know where my favorites of the year rank as of right now, but this is definitely one of my favorites of 2012. Going into it, I heard nothing but honestly great things. In fact, people kept saying that reviews kept saying that it pretty much just has everything. And that is very cliche, and it's cliche to say that, but the truth is, the movie has like elements of action, horror, sci-fi, romance, comedy. Um, the thing is, it doesn't really matter all that it has all that stuff. The point is, is that it does each and every one of those things just remarkably well, and that's what makes it great. Another thing that I heard going into it is that everyone felt like they were in good hands while watching the movie. Like they trusted the filmmaker early on or they knew they could trust the filmmaker. And honestly for me about 15 minutes into the movie I realized that I was in exactly that, good hands. That it felt like whatever was going to happen with these characters in this situation that it was going to be fantastic. And I was positive of that. Honestly like 20 minutes in I couldn't wait to be correct about it. And I felt like I was. The director of the film, Ryan Johnson, who, this is his third theatr uh, theatrical effort. He did a film called Brick with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, another film called The Brothers Bloom. I saw both of them. They're, they're you know, they're decent. They're not, nothing, like, incredibly special. You see talent there. Um, he's at a whole new level with this one. Uh, my favorite work of his, honestly, was he did two episodes of Breaking Bad. One was the Fly episode. If anyone watches that show, you know what that is. Uh, and he just did another one for this last season. Uh, he is someone that after this movie is someone you're going to want to watch. And, you know, look forward to his next work. And, um, yeah. He's pretty good. I'm not going to really go into the plot too much. I mean, you've seen the 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 trailers and stuff. Joseph Gordon-Levitt um, is an assassin that kills people from the future that are sent back via time travel. And, um... Eventually, he's sent back his future self. Um, he's a looper. And the thing is, loopers are eventually sent back their future self to close the loop. That's the idea. And his future self is played by Bruce Willis. Um, I'm not going to go into anything else in the movie because, honestly, the best way to go see this movie is to know as little about it as possible. And I'm not going to do any spoiler stuff in this review. Uh, I'm going to try not to anyway. But uh, I'm not going to take any spoilers, I'm not going to take the comments out, so if someone's going to spoil stuff in the comments, you know, that's fine. Anyone that doesn't want to be spoiled, don't read them. But uh, I will just say, once again, just if you go into this film cold, you'll enjoy it that much more. As far as the actors go, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, this is probably the best performance he's given in a film. He, he's always someone that adds to the movies he's been in. He's been in a lot of ensembles lately. Um, but... Yeah, just like this film, he can he kind of has to carry this movie. I mean, he gets help once you get through like the first maybe half hour of the film. He's, um, you know, then Bruce Willis shows up and eventually Emily Blunt and everyone else. So he gets help, so he doesn't have to, I guess, completely carry the movie. But he's capable of it. And he's such a likable actor that even here playing, you know, essentially an anti-hero, uh, you still just, you root for him. And you know what? I didn't see Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and it wasn't just the prosthetics that make him look, uh, you know, convincingly enough like Bruce Willis um, that was able to kind of mask him here. Just, this is a completely different guy from the one in The Dark Knight Rises or Inception or I'm sure in, you know, Lincoln, which is coming up that he's in. And, yeah, he's even doing the prosthetics. He's even, you know, does a, a you know good little thing with his voice that makes him even sound a little bit more like Bruce Willis. But... He's just fantastic, and I know a lot of people are, I'm hearing kind of the joke that people are getting a little tired of him, that he's just in something all the time. Almost kind of like the Jude Law thing from about five or six years ago, when Jude Law was in like eight movies in uh, the span of like four months or something. Actually, I think it was like six. But 
yeah, he's had a great year, and he's someone that isn't going away, and he shouldn't go away. Bruce Willis has had a great year with this and Moonrise Kingdom. The thing about Bruce Willis is that he really, really is a good actor when he gets a role that doesn't require him to play Bruce Willis, you know, action star. Not that I don't enjoy that version of Bruce Willis, but the thing is he really can be so much more. And it's nice to see a director, you know, use that. And use his talent. I hope as he does get older, he keeps taking, you know, he's able to transition into more roles like this film or something like Moonrise, Moonrise Kingdom. Um, that's not to say he doesn't get his badass moment in this, and he really does. He gets a great Bruce Willis action, you know, scene moment, but it feels so much more visceral in a film like this because this is a hard R rated movie. Uh, another good thing about it. And uh, it's kind of the things I've been missing from, you know, him even as an action star here. But, uh, yeah, just, I don't know if I would call it one of his best performances, but it was better than just, like, a solid action performance. He was just really, really good. All right, Emily Blunt also, um, doing a flawless American accent shows up in the film, and she, it is a testament to the filmmakers as well, her role isn't just the, you know, the woman in the movie. She, she's not in, you know, any particular way, you know, does anything like special neither does willis or levette or anything like that she's just remarkably good it's and just adds to it that's the best thing i can say she completely adds to the movie and i know that doesn't really sound like it says much about it but it's just hard to put in the words just like really what makes the film great it's just is she's also accompanied by a boy in the film i won't say what the relationship is but the actor i think is around 10 and it's a great performance it's a performance where he shows up and you're like oh thank god like this kid's a great actor and again just something that adds to the movie the rest of the supporting cast there's you know good work by jeff daniels paul dano piper parabu um yeah just solid work all around by everyone okay i'm not going to talk about the plot of the movie but i have to talk about time travel a little bit uh, the thing in this film doesn't decide to go the route of not having a paradox. And actually, Roger Ebert, his review of the film, basically said that the movie embraces the paradox, which is kind of how... which is true. And you kind of have to embrace it as well. But... And again, that sounds almost like a negative, but it, somehow it really isn't. The movie doesn't use alternate realities or anything like that. I'll just say it kind of uses an alternate memory way about things if you see the movie you know what i mean it kind of like uh familiar to a, a film called frequency if anyone's seen that with dennis quaid and jim caviezel if you've seen the movie then that's kind of how this film uses it um and the thing is you can dissect it and you know pull it apart if you want and if you want that to take away from the film then that's really your choice but you know like there's, there's paradoxes in Back to the Future and you know, the Terminator films, but I think a lot of us choose to look past them and just enjoy it. And, you know, to be honest, this film establishes it rule, its rules very early on. So basically, if you don't accept it right away, the movie just takes over anyway, and you just pretty much are entertained from beginning to end. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, the movie does do the whole, you know, would you go back and kill Hitler as like a, a kid thing, sort of. And, you know, those are fun things to discuss with people and everything like that. But again, if you want the paradox aspect of the time travel element of the movie to ruin it for you, you know, then I kind of feel sorry for you because this movie takes chances left and right, takes risks left and right. It's completely, you know, fearless and original in its approach. And it deserves to be praised for all of those things because it pulls it off remarkably well. I know I'm like just saying the same things over and over, but this movie's just great. Also, not to mention, the film rewards you for paying attention. The whole Chekhov's gun thing, which is, you know, if a gun appears in the first act, it'll be used in the last act. This film has, like, four of those guns that, uh, if you pay attention, it completely rewards you um, at the end. And even if you don't pay attention, the second time around that you do see it, you'll notice it, and you're just gonna find more and more to, you know enjoy about it and i think that's going to be the case with me 
you know, I'm looking forward to watching this again. I'm looking forward to buying it. And, uh, yeah, so, again, I feel like I should say more about it, but I don't want to, you know, spoil it somehow. Um, yeah, anyone out there, go check out Looper if you think it's something that you might like. And if you think it's something you're not sure about, go check it out anyway. Because it's one of those that it will win you over. And uh, I'm... Honestly, I feel extremely confident in saying that because I heard nothing but great things about the movie and I couldn't wrap my head around, like, well, is it really going to be that good? And it is. It really is. So, yeah, 9 out of 10 for Looper. One of the best films of the year. All right? Later, guys. I'll be back for... Um, I'll be doing, I think, a 7 Psychopaths review next week. I'll try to do Argo as well, the new Ben Affleck movie. Uh, in the meantime, Dexter starts up tomorrow night, so I'll be doing a look for that on Monday. Until then, see ya.